We're back. Hi, everyone. Uh, Omar and Pupar here. With... Hola, como esta? Muy bien, tú? I would, no, we'll do, we'll do it in English. Uh, back for another episode edition of the All Dolphins podcast on YouTube, the Miami Dolphins Insider podcast for the Fans First Sports Network, where you can find your favorite podcast. And we're hoping that very soon that that's going to be us, if it's not already. Today's Who else is breaking down daily training uh, mini camp practices tell me the That's people who actually point. saw it not the people who are talking about what other people saw that's a very very good point. i was trying to be i'm just i'm just popping my collar even though i don't have one on today there you go and i'm gonna pop my hoodie here how's that um <laughs> so yeah today was mini camp practice number two of three scheduled the last one is tomorrow we'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow where we will be back to talk about that one again but let's first attack Mini camp practice number two, or do we want to talk about the latest thing involving Dalvin Cook, which maybe or may not be a thing? It may not be a thing because he, he just posted some cryptic picture of a chef cooking. I don't know what that means. Um, as we as I have said countless times after beginning to look at this situation before the draft, it's a contract shakedown that went left for Minnesota. Even though they had one of the best records in the NFL, they're clearly bottoming out and trying to tank for whatever situation. Doesn't make any sense to me. But, hey, if you want to get rid of Dalvin Cook, go ahead and release him. But I don't think anybody's going to be trading for him. Correct, because then, then you have to take on his contract, which is the only reason, possibly sane reason, the Vikings will want to move on from him in the first place. Because, spoiler alert, the dude can play. And they're going to tank for what? To go from 13 and three, sorry, what is it? 13 and four to nine and eight or eight and nine? That's, yeah, it's. Oh, if you're going to be bad, you might as well just bottom out because they, they already said they're not going to be re signing Kirk Cousins or this is his last year or whatever. You know, the, you know, Kirk Cousins is a good businessman. So he's going to ball out and then move on and, you know, pimp somebody else for another $25 million. But if you, if you want, if you don't want Dalvin Cook, Okay, no problem. But I, I personally believe they'll hold on to him and probably trade him maybe during training camp, maybe during the exhibition season, and maybe during before the trade deadline. But again, though, here's the thing. What kind of an approach is that after, again, this is a team that won 13 games last year. I, I mean, agree with you. And I understand, that, I understand that they want to like create some financial flexibility moving forward, but they still have, last I checked, they still have Justin Jefferson on the roster. Harrison Smith's a hell of a safety. Now there's a, there's word I saw something today that Daniel Hunter, apparently they're getting phone calls for him. I, again, spoiler alert, another guy who's a really good player. So if you get rid of all your good players, you're clearly doing what the Dolphins did when they got rid of all their good players. After after 20 years of going nine and seven or eight and eight or seven and nine. I, mean, I agree. The, uh, minus exception. Anyway, okay, so let's move on from that. Mini camp number two, both you and I kind of did a story on alldolphins.com, recapping our thoughts. You kind of focus more on five observations. I kind of basically go all over the place. I think we're probably in the same area, as I recall, where the top performers, Eric Izukama had a really good day. Yeah. Raekwon Davis, I was, I felt him quite a bit actually in practice today. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, even though... The O line kind of dominated the D line, which surprised the crap out of me. There were holes everywhere, and I know there aren't pads on, but there were running lanes, running surges, O line push, and in the defense's defense, let me let me let me put this out there. In the defense's defense, they didn't have no offense to the offense. Go ahead. Sorry. They didn't have Zach Sealer. Mm -hmm. They didn't have Bradley Chubb. They didn't have Jalen Phillips. They didn't have David Long. Uh, they didn't have uh, Jalen, Ram um, Jalen Ramsey, Channing Tindall. So, you know, it it was and it when it was vanilla, you know. But hey, it's props. Clap it up if you can run the ball. I think you can have a very productive. You're already sixth in the NFL last year with the second worst rushing attack uh, in, in the NFL per yard, not per carry. There's a difference per yard because they didn't run the ball. I believe okay. they were middle of the pack in terms of rushing average per carry. And the reason they did, they, they were like 31st in rushing offense, which is how people look at it. That's yards. They didn't run the ball. So, of course, they didn't gain a lot of 
yards. Here's the thing always to me though, and I always get, I hate using that word, but queasy writing about a long game. You don't like to quote Joe Philbin? Running play in practice, it's like, okay. Uh, and you know as, this as well as I do that, especially nowadays, the days of like training camp practices where offensive line, defensive line are really going at each other and it's physical and you hear pads popping, those are long gone. Absolutely. So now w- what's a long to really productive play? Well, maybe the offensive line got quicker to his spot and had the proper technique, sealed the hole. The other guy did a very good job. So from that standpoint, yeah, it was a productive day for the running game and the offensive line looked pretty good, but it's always, we always have to couch that though. I look at it from this standpoint um, and, and you know, I love my trenches because half the time you got to tell me how plays ended because I'm watching the trenches and, and that's why I can tell you, oh no, that wouldn't have been the play because this guy would have had a sack. I focus on the trenches. I always have. And when I evaluate a run play, especially in these no padded practice. If an offensive tackle is turning and turning to lock off a guy to create a wall, oh, you got that. Like there's nothing that a a defensive lineman can do because he put himself in position to block you. So should be, let me just interject quickly, except that in a game, the defensive lineman is going to work like hell to disengage. Whereas in the practice, it's like, okay, you got the step on me. You got, you got me walled off with the angle. Okay. Good play. Okay. But you put yourself in position. Let's, let's have a, let's have an educated discussion here. You put yourself in position as an offensive lineman to do your job. How many times have you seen a pulling guard or a tackle wall off a defender in a game? They could, they, you know, you don't see it very often. Yeah, with this team. a couple of times last year, okay, because this is where I'm like of the opinion that the running game wasn't anywhere near the issue that some people might suggest, and that the 31st ranking would suggest again because they just didn't run the ball. Okay, or they were selective running the ball, which is why they had success. I need you to be able to run the ball when you need to run fair, the ball. Fair, that, and also, that, that's because to me that's. If I, and as I opened up my five observations, if I had to I had a magic wand and had the ability to wave it and fix a Dolphins issue, I would make you a top 10 rushing team. You could keep and do everything else that you've already done. I'm not changing a single thing. You could even keep your piss poor defense. But if you're a top 10, yeah, I said it. If you're a top That's 10 it. rushing That's team, it. if you're a top 10 rushing team with Tua Tonga Valoa as your quarterback, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the NFL, one of the biggest big play producers, oh, it's going to keep teams. Oh, yeah, look at you. Look at that face. Look at that face. Uh, uh, did, you, did, did I tell a lie in anything I just said? The one two wide receivers act- produce the big plays. Okay, was he, okay, or was he not one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the NFL last year? He was accurate, yes. He was. Was he, was. he or was he not the biggest play producing quarterback in the NFL? Yes or no? That lacks context, though. Uh, no, I don't you're going to get me hated again. Was that two of the quarterback who delivered the most big plays in the NFL last year? No. Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. I said a quarterback. I didn't say players. Answer but, the question. But you can't do it without the receivers. And this is, and again, I, I really, oh my God, I'm going to get dragged into a Tua discussion. Tua is. You great. are going to get dragged because you're okay. not giving him credit. I said facts to you and you denied those facts on Tua. No, I am saying that your stats lack nuance and context to say, to just throw out the numbers of like he had the most 20 yard completions completely w- ignores the fact that he also had the two wide receivers who were probably most uh, open more most often down the field by a wide margin. And that's, you can't have one without the other, but I don't, he had a great year. Did he, he or did he not deliver the most big plays in the NFL passing game? I don't, I object to your phrasing, but <laughs> he had a great year. He had a, he had a great year and dude, just to, to point out my fairness here, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, I said, I have no issue if somebody wants to put him top 10. Okay. I recall oh, that. Yes. And you, and you weren't even sure. And, and from your end, I don't believe you even went as far as I did. No. I, okay. I mean, so no. I, I, was... I like to him more than you do, apparently. <laughs> it's just, I want some, I want some nuance. And, and I cringe every time I see those numbers. It's like, yeah, 
Because, They're facts, though. But, but it's like, again, it, it, the wide receivers are getting open down the field. And 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 ten and Ryan Tannehill would not de- hit and deliver accurate passes to those wide open receivers. No, but I can name you twelve in a hurry that would. So okay, that's, all right, fine. Anyway, why? How do we get completely diverted into that? In that well, the point of the conversation was the if you game. added a top ten rushing attack to who Tua is and who this offense is as a six ranked offense with a very selective rushing attack. I think they would, without a doubt, be one of the top NFL offenses if they could stay healthy and if the offensive line isn't a, isn't a train wreck. But the, and here's what I would tell you is that they were at one point last year until yeah. defenses kind of figured out a way to, to defend them. Better defenses started playing against them, and then the offense kind of – and even Jalen Waddle, he's the first player – who actually who acknowledged heard that? Who acknowledged the fact that the offense kind of slipped a little bit, and it wasn't strictly because of that. The end where Tua went out. It was before that, uh, and yeah. But you, I'm going to go back to a great point that you made, and add again because this is me lacking nuance. So shame on me for doing that. Part of the reason why the rushing average per carry was all, also was good. Again, it's because we'd be crazy not to mention again. That stupid speed they have outside the the beep beep speed with Tyreek and Jalen Waddle, which again completely softens and opens up the defense because those DBs are so scared of getting beat deep. So you you're not you're certainly not seeing eight men in the box stop, trying to stop the run. So it creates more room for the running game. So that all that all plays into it. And I think there there needs to, there can be better balance. But I'm with you. That let's go back again. Bring it back to today. Yes, the running game looked actually good, and it was very interesting too. Um, cause I made the point and I was criticized for making that point that to me, again, Devon, uh, Devon a chain and seven, Savan Ahmed are the same guy. And one point today, somebody carried the ball and everybody was like, that was a chain. You sat I, there oh, arguing was who, who was carrying the ball. <laughs> yes. And no, no, you, you were the first one that pointed it out to me that they're very similar in style when they go to the far field, because we're so far, we have to watch from binoculars. The six looks like an eight. So you can't really tell unless you identify what one is particularly wearing, like a chain is wearing a sleeve on his left leg. Obviously, he's he's nursing something. And then you pointed out Savan is wearing was wearing pants. pants. So it you know, but I, I will I will make this. And and I made that one of my five observations. And I know the people who are draft obsessed because, you know, when you're a Dolphins fan, every draft pick is going to be a Hall of Famer. So, you know, or, or or at least a pro bowler, you know, I, th- when you sit there and you discredit the fact that Devon Achain is going to be a pro bowler and is not going to be an immediate rookie starter sensation, you know, fantasy football guy, you know, you're a hater. But I have always been a fan of Savan Ahmed during this phase. When they do not have pads on, he is – arguably a top 10 playmaker on the team. I'm talking offense and defense. He is a can't stop offensive player when they do not have pads on. Then what has happened the last three years is the minute they put pads on, he just vanishes into thin air and I never see him anymore. With few exception. I'm going to go back to the Buffalo game where he was really good. Yes. So, Yes, those little speedy, shifty guys, and, and and I could say the same thing about Mitchell uh, uh, Mitchell Ag, uh, uh, Aguda, who I've just become obsessed with. You know, when there are no pads on, those little twitchy, freakish athletes, they they flash at you. They're 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 hard to stop. Um, so you know. So it, it, the game changes a little bit when their pads on, and and that's you could say the same thing for the offensive line. But let me get into the offensive line. Go I saw it. Austin Jackson sealing off plays. I saw Liam Eichenberg at center creating a line surge, and I saw Robert Jones pushing the pocket. I saw Robert Hunt pushing the pocket, and I said to myself, I didn't really see Isaiah win that. I didn't really get because they, you know, they were on that side was far from me. But I said to myself, I think they can run block like I do. And this is without Connor Williams, who I think is your number two run blocker. I know you'll disagree. Um, And 
your number without your number one run blocker, which is Teron Armstead, which we know is is a beast in the run game. So if you could do that on a consistent basis from three offensive linemen without your top two offensive linemen, hey, you might have something there. And I know I know uh, Mike McDaniel has made an emphasis. I got to do better there. Yeah, part of the part of the the issue. And by the way, yes, I do think Robert Hunt's the second best run blocker on this team. Uh, and I don't think he's that far from Teron Armstead. I, I like I, I happen to think a lot more highly of him than you do. What Mike McDaniel said after the season is he admitted he went away from the running game too quickly, and he's gonna. The, the issue was the again he has that crazy speed on the outside, and he's gonna have he's got even crazier speed for the passing game this year. When you add Robbie Chosen and you have you add Devon A. Chain. So he's gonna have to resist the temptation to default to let me get the let me get the ball out because I could we, I could be looking at a really, really big play very quickly at any time. Um, I like I like the meat and potatoes. I like yes, the mashed do. potatoes. I like I like that four yards head down. Give me that cloud of dust. I I I think that you pound teams and move to Tennessee and cover the Titans. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when you pound teams, that fourth quarter you can do whatever you want. And when Derrick Henry was right and Tenny was making it work, and the Titans weren't getting injured, it was a formula that worked for them. Only it never took them to the Super Bowl. They did reach the AFC Championship game one year. Got them further and than the Dolphins have reached the last 20 years. Correct. It's very, very effective, but it's also one that, first of all, it's it not conducive to be able, being able to come from behind because the past, once okay. once teams expect the Titans to, to throw the ball, that becomes a problem. Uh, okay. Let's move on to a different topic. The quarterbacks, we always got to talk about the quarterbacks. Um, I'm going to be polite. Go ahead, be polite. Wow, that'll be a nice change. I'm sorry, go ahead. Skylar Thompson's your number two quarterback right now. And while they might be rotating, if that's what we see at practice, uh, the guy who's delivering the best performances, no matter who he's working with, is Skylar Thompson. And I will give Mike White this one excuse. Hold on, let me interject before we go there. Two was the most effective quarterback today. Okay, there I said it. Two was the most effective quarterback today. Go ahead, go your turn. I'm not even sure I would agree with that. Okay, go for it. Skylar Thompson had a couple of really bad throws. He had like one absolutely gorgeous pass, the one to uh, David Davis, the rookie, yeah. in late in the practice. But, but two did nothing but check downs. Yeah, no, like one or through two throws that were I don't know, 10, 15 yards on the field, but he was pinpoint. Um, yeah, I mean. It was it was nothing but move the chain, check down, and and, and Tua even complained about what they were calling, and you know to Frank Smith, according to him, and Frank Smith explained to him that hey, Mike McDaniel wants to work on the basics, and and I understand exactly where Mike McDaniel comes from. These are days. If you don't get them in now, you don't know what the issues are. You gotta you gotta identify. You gotta make sure there's a commitment. I've covered 15 years as a Dolphins, and you know how many times they I've heard coaches say, "We gotta commit to the run game. We gotta commit to the run game." You know how you commit to the run game? You work on it. You actually work on it. And so many coaches, time after time after time after time, say, "We gotta commit to the run game," and then never work on it. And they expect it to just show up on game day. That's not how you do it. I bet you that's not how Tennessee does it. Well, but again, that's an identity, though, because I know this is this is a topic, and a lot of times it drives me nuts because uh, what's the identity of this offense? Well, guess what? In Tennessee, Fast. the offense is Derrick Henry. The identity of the offense in Miami is the speed outside. That's your identity. So I, I think you're going to be out of luck if your if your wish is to be like a ground and pound type of team. That that's there. That's not what the personnel's there. Hey, man, this coach's background is ground and pound. Yeah, in San Francisco, when he had a like a hell of an offensive line to he run, he did it in Atlanta too. Okay, didn't he have the, the, the believe the year they the made the Freeman. Super Bowl? Yeah, Devontae Freeman. Yeah, okay, Devontae uh, Freeman, Tevin Coleman. He did it. He did it. Okay, but again, that was the identity of he did not. He's nobody's ever had the kind of stupid speed the Dolphins have at wide receiver. It's almost. It's almost criminal to make this a runner. I'm not saying that it need, you need to shift your focus. 
Good. But let one hand wash the other. Let them complement one another. If you can effectively run the ball and effectively trigger play action and make teams actually have to respect your run, those wide receivers are open even more wide, wide open downfield. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I think you and I both know that it'd be awesome if they were top three in both running and th passing, but not very realistic. Uh, I think maybe Minnesota was last year or somebody was. P Philadelphia was. Philadelphia was. They were? Okay. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I, because I always say. Offensive line in football probably in the last five years, but that's. Okay. Touche. Touche. Different, different topic. Okay. So we're going back to you like Skyler's work today. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't super. I'm just saying if we're going to, if we're going to sit here and decide who's the number two quarterback right now, if I'm taking to a game, I'm, I'm taking Skyler Thompson to the game. I, I and maybe it's because he has a better mastery and understanding of the offense. Maybe it's because he has better chemistry with the playmakers. Even though he don't know he will, he don't know the Wood Davis from from Adam at this point, um, but he certainly made it look like he did. Um, that was a seventy yard pass. That was well, not running all catch, the air. running catch, okay. running catch. But it would have been a seventy yard score. There's no you know there was nobody. And I don't even think they they put him at like the twenty, and I found that kind of disrespectful. Like, you, you that was a score. Like, I know no tackling, but it was a yeah, it was a practice score where the guys are. Nobody close came to like him within playing. five yards of the guy. He caught it in stride or with the slant and was gone. Yeah, and then okay, but it does it does it have to be a seventy yard touchdown? Can we just say it was a great deep deep out pass by by Skyler Thompson? Where's your safety help? If that was a, it was good coverage, a great throw where he just dropped it over the, over the defender, like 30, 40 yards on field. I mean, that put, was put some respect on Skyler's name, man. But yeah, unfortunately, there's a lack of consistency, though. There were a couple of of, okay. of yuckies too. I mean, so I mean, um, yucky. Think about the line he's working with. Think about the weaponry he's working with. He, you know, I'm not gonna say what team he was with today, but it was. It, it was yeah but the receivers rotate in and out i mean i saw that's fair that's true from mike white so that's yeah know, that's, 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 true. that's true um receivers and tight ends rotated in and out they did um watch, watch durham smite block today that was pretty impressive i was like mm, that, that, yeah. he, he was he was helping in the run game as well and ingle alec ingle had probably one of the top performers of practice today i mean it was his day because they were working on a lot of run plays. They were working on a lot of bootlegs. They'll, those are the plays where he's on the field. He'll probably might get one of those practices during training camp. And, you know, and he showed that, hey, I'm I'm here. I-I'm ready to work. Three straight catches and an 11 on 11 set. For Tua. From Tua. Correct. Yep. Um, no, I think he's a solid player. And you know what you have in him. And I don't, don't think there's really a whole lot of mystery there. Trying to think here, who else caught your eye? Justin Bethel had the one interception of practice on a kind of a poor throw by Mike. Who's your top five cornerbacks? I, I I wrote about it in um in my five observations. Uh, I, I I let's preface this by saying I'm putting Nick Needham and Brandon Jones on PUP. They're beginning the season on PUP. The season or training camp? Training camp and probably the season. They're they're gonna be. Yeah. Nine months training when training camp opens, they're nine months from rehab. I, I, and I get that athletes, mm -hmm. Cameron Wake, um, uh, Brian um, Grimes, came back Brian Grimes th those are freaks of nature. Yeah. Those are, those are human mutants. Now, are Nick Needham and Brandon Jones human mutants? We don't know yet, do we? Well, may, we may find out this summer. Okay, so to answer your question, five, top five cornerbacks minus Nick Needham because he's starting on PUP. Obviously, X, obviously, Jalen Ramsey, Tater, Kohu. I'm, I'm assuming we're putting Trill Williams at safety because the dude is big. Uh, <laughs> we wrote about that. We never discussed it yesterday because we forgot Trill Williams among the players who were there but didn't practice. Man, that guy's big. He's, uh, he, he's probably... Uh, a two burger day at Burger Five from being two twenty. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he's listed on the roster, but some of those he's things. he's at 202 on the roster. I can tell you right now. But, no, uh, he's it, not, not 202. If he's 202, yeah, I'm 202. Not a chance and, he's 202. Yeah, if he's 202, I'm 202, and I'm not anywhere near 202. Uh, on and the, I'm not saying he's uh, fat or out of condition. He's just a no, big no, no. He's big. He's just big. Just like Tua's weight hasn't changed on the roster. He's still listed at six one two seven. Yeah, they don't update the weight. No. Uh, well, you know what? They do sometimes before the start of the regular season. That's when you. That's when you'll see it. Um, so Jalen X, Cater Kohu, Cam Smith obviously has to be in among your top five. And then it becomes, dare I say it, well, the, the other, okay, Keon Crossan is a possibility, Noah. Uh, and I think here, if salary considerations come into play, Dolphins have to eat some money. I don't remember the exact, no, I think it's one point. No, I think it's 3 million of cap space. If they dump Noah, they don't eat anything. If it's Keon Crossan, in fact, they gain cap space. Um, yeah, they could cut Keon crazy. Crossan for 3-2 and get all of that cap space back. Noah yeah. is, yeah, it, it's Noah's like one point. I'm, I'm trying to find it right now, but yes. No, it's not. It's not completely irresponsible, but I'm 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 keeping Noah on my roster. Noah's my breaking case of emergency. Maybe I could stash him on injury reserve if I if I I, I can't use him on special teams. Um, I'm I'm not eating that money. I I always feel uncomfortable when I'm asking Steve Ross to eat money to make players go away. It's easy for us to say to to tell him to eat money. Um, for some yeah, one point six is guaranteed. Go. So he's going to get one point six okay. million dollars from the Dolphins. No matter what, um, of his two point one salary, which you know, but Keon Cross is making like three point two. So, like you know, okay. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head the other cornerbacks on the roster. Tino Ellis has been there like every every summer it seems for the past ten years, and he just hasn't stuck. Um, okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but um, but he hasn't stuck. Je Bethel, um, Justin, I Bethel do Justin Bethel, um, his value diminishes a little bit, a little bit with the kid new kickoff rule because he's a core special teams guy. Um, I don't, yeah, it's it's going to be a battle. That's one of those roster battles. I don't know if that's if it's at the same level as the QB two battle. Yeah, but it's a position battle of basically cornerback five because your your top four are pretty set. Yeah. Yes, and Keon Crossing is 3.2, and that, you know, you can do whatever you want with that deal because uh, he's got to perform on special teams to even to even extend his stay. So your decisions are Keon Crossing or Noah Igbenogany. Or Bethel, if we're talking the fifth or, or Bethel, yes. And that's before Needham comes back. Yes. But you always know, and this is why I'm putting Needham, and for those who don't understand, I'm putting Needham on the PUP. They've got to stash them. For the four, first four games, by the time you get to game four, some one of those guys gonna be hurt. So wow, that's very pessimistic. I mean, I'm just a realist. I'm, 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 I'm I mean, cornerbacks do more running than any other position in the NFL. Because remember, they don't sub in and out like wide receivers usually, and that's true. they they suffer injuries. They just do. And then speaking I, I have never covered this team where the Dolphins didn't need six cornerbacks to make it through a season. No, yeah, that goes but yeah, part for the course for for the entire league, though. Speaking of injuries, we even though we kind of knew what the deal was, but David Long Jr., here we go. Um, and normally it would be well, you dude, you're shrugging your shoulders. And for me, it's like normally it wouldn't be a big deal for a guy to be like you know, not practicing in June because of some kind of minor injury. But again, considering the injury history he brought with him when the Dolphins signed him as a free agent, yeah, it's problematic. Because you're like in June already. I mean it's a yeah. tweak. As 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 okay, but Daniel said, it's a tweak. And to be transparent. If you're going to tell me that David Long Jr. is on a Tehran Armstead program, I'm going to say, okay. I'm, if that's what we got to do to make it through. But that's not what he, That's not what McDaniel said. McDaniel I know, that, I don't know that's not what he said, but. He got an injury. So, okay, the guy, the guy who's 
always in, I don't want to say always injured, but who missed 12 games at the end of the past two seasons, who got called out by Mike Vrabel the way I'm not sure, I don't recall many players getting called out for not taking care of the body and getting injured too easily for him to suffer some kind of setback in the off season. Yeah. It's highly problematic. You, you you know, you know, I'm, I'm going to quote Bill Parcells. You know why you don't draft small players? Because if they don't bite uh, when they're puppies, they don't bite. No, right. no, that's different. No, that's, that's, a different. Another one. Uh, that's another you are, one. You are what your record says you are. No, uh, that's that's another one. one. Um, okay, go ahead. You, I forget that if, one. You, if, you, if you draft small players and you continue to make exceptions, next thing you know, you have a team full of exceptions. There you go. And David Long is exceptionally small for his position and the physical nature of his position. And as I said, and this is not a, a knock on him, I was surprised at how small he was when I first saw him from field level. And I was like, whoa, that's small. And I know Zach Thomas was small. And everybody's going to say, oh, well, Zach Thomas was small. Okay, Zach Thomas was small, but he's also a Hall of Famer. And he's also an outlier. Yeah, he's an outlier. Whereas David Long is not an outlier. And he's... The, the reason you don't draft small players is because their bodies can't hold up to the physical beating of the NFL. And yes, there are always exceptions, but as Parcells mentioned, you have to be very careful. Yes. About drafting exceptions. Um, uh, Robbie chosen spoke today and we, we, we talked about it yesterday. Um, you all know I am a Robbie chosen fan. Yes, you are. Um, I am well documented. One that I thought that that was my favorite move of the offseason, not including Jalen Ramsey, because you're adding a starting caliber receiver for basically the minimum. Um, and only because the young man wants to play for his hometown team and really knows what it means to be a Dolphin. There's nobody, including Mike White, who says he didn't grow up a Dolphin fan. There's nobody on the Dolphins who wanted to, I think Mike White did say he grew up a Dolphin fan, but he didn't really pay attention to the team, but Robbie Anderson, oh, Robbie Chosen, Robbie Chosen, grew up a Dolphin fan, and this means a lot to him. And he's out there working and practicing like it means a lot to him. Um, didn't really. I thought Eric Uzukama did had a very nice day. I thought uh, Devon Davis, D Daywood Davis, they were yeah. If I was going to be fair, Daywood Davis would get my top performer because the pass caught he caught was was money, and he actually when they put him at the twenty, he caught another pass that I was like I I debated with you would that have been a touchdown because nobody's even within yeah. his 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 region, uh um and you know they ended the drill with that, so maybe it was but Eric Uzukama is a guy when he runs remember we talked about the slants yesterday. Mm -hmm. And how I think that that's Tua's bread and butter, man, that guy. And I always thought that Devontae Parker would run very good slants for Tua. He didn't. Um, Devontae was always a contested catch uh, and, and, a, and a very poor route runner, in my opinion. Um, he was, he was a poor route I, runner. I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't say I disagree with you. I just said, ouch. That's all. Like uh, one of my, one of my, favorite stories ever in my career is going out to Pete Bomarito to look at Devontae Parker and seeing and Stefan Diggs knows that I'm a media member he knows that I'm there he's 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 there at practice he's nobody he is literally nobody nobody knows who Stefan Diggs is and he goes oh you here to see Devontae okay just make sure you watch me too and literally they go out and they practice and he does every single thing that Devontae does and does every single drill that Devontae does and by far outperforms him. Yep. And I'm thinking to myself, who the bleep is this guy? And Devontae just was Devontae, which, you know, we ended up having him here and it's it's okay. But I'm not saying Eric Uzukama can be Devontae or is better than Devontae, but he's got the body type for the receiver that Miami needs. He runs a very good slant route. Um, He's got the size to be able to shield off defenders when he does run those routes. Yes. And it, it, it has my wheels turning. Like, could he be my number five receiver? It's, it's it, you know, I'm not putting him ahead of Braxton Barris because I need a slot. 
And I'm not putting him ahead of Chosen just because I know what Chosen's resume is. Because you love body. Chosen, that's why. No, you see, Chosen can do the I, high points. Dude, I'm playing. I'm playing with you. I agree with you that there are. We're 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 running out of time a little bit here. I completely agree with you that the top four are pretty clear. The five, and then it's pretty clear you have to keep Cedric Wilson Jr. on the roster, and. You do five because million dollars. I mean, you're not going to flush five again. We're flushing Stephen Ross's five million. It's easy for us to do, um, and I don't think they're giving up on Nezukama. Yeah, so there's six wide receivers. I don't know where that leaves River Craycraft in the whole equation here. I like the squad again. Yep, yeah, very, very possibly. Uh, we would be remiss since we promised this on the show yesterday. Did we? we would have an update? Yes, we would have an update on Connor Williams. Be, even be, even though I'm pretty sure that everybody knows by now, no, he did not show up. So now he's at uh, Omar. What's the math? How many? Um, you know, has he, he forfeited? He's at. Uh, he's like four. It's forty two thousand dollars tomorrow. So he's at like forty something thousand dollars in fines. Yeah. Hey, it's it's your money. If you want to throw it away, go on ahead. Like, I I'd, I'd hop on a flight. And and be here tomorrow to save myself forty two thousand dollars, because he doesn't have to practice. No, but he may be. A, it may be a matter of principle for him, and, and he may be telling his agent when you negotiate my new contract, put in a uh, fine forgiveness clause in in the contract, as was done with X a few summers ago. I, and I will say this, even though we don't have that much time. I'm kind of getting comfortable with Liam Eikenberg at center. It's not like we're having the snapping issues we had with Connor Williams at the beginning of his journey as a center. You know, we might have one erratic snap. It's not It's not bad. I posed a question today, and all I did was I posed a question. Wasn't trying to stir anything up. I posed a question. Do we know for a fact that Connor Williams is that much better at center than what Liam Eikenberg could become? Is he that much better at center than what Dan Feeney is. I know the metrics will say, I know I think PFF had him as the number eight center in the NFL today. And I didn't see that Dan Feeney was in the top 10. They didn't, I don't know how far the, down they went. We know it for sure that there would be that kind of a difference. I, Dennis, I'm not saying, obviously the Dolphins are better when they have Connor Williams because it gives them more depth on the on the offensive line. But at some point, something's going to have to give. Um, either he gets a contract extension or he accepts the fact that he's not getting a contract extension and shows up. Yeah, I, I'm I'm starting to take the Liam Eikenberg at center a little bit more seriously. Just we'll see. Tell you what, maybe Connor Williams will surprise us and show up tomorrow. And I know I'm not. And tell you what, we'll actually we pr promise we will deliver the uh, end the suspense tomorrow, whether he showed up or not. When we do this again, or either tomorrow night or it could be Friday, but we'll do another one of these to wrap up media camp practice number three. This was wrap up of number two. He is Omar. I am Pupar. Thanks again for listening, watching, paying attention, all that good stuff. Omar. All right.